Okay. Hey guys, Pastor Hiller here. We are ready today to talk about the third commandment. And so to get into the third commandment, we're going to talk about what it means to go to church. Why do we go to church? Uh, why do we have what we might call a Sabbath rest? And that's what we're going to talk about today. In order to get into that, I want to read you an account from the Gospel of Luke. And this is from Luke chapter 10. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken from her. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, now I'm going to set the scene for you here. You, you just heard Jesus is coming over to dinner at Mary and Martha's house. And so Martha is excited and she's thrilled, but she's anxious. And she's very busy. She has to make sure everything is perfect. So she's making dinner. She's cleaning the house. She's doing all of these things. And as she does this, she notices her sister Mary is nowhere around to help. In fact, Mary is sitting down with the rest of the disciples in the position of a disciple. And in those days, many people believed that only men should be disciples, not women. And so there is Mary sitting with the men learning from Jesus. So Martha storms outside and she tells Jesus, now, now tell my sister to get busy, to come in and help me. She needs to help me in the kitchen. But Jesus is having none of this. He corrects Martha and he says, listen, you are anxious about many things, but Mary has chosen the better portion. She's doing the better thing. She's sitting and she's listening to what I have to say. Because you see, what Jesus is telling Martha in this moment is that there is nothing more important going on when Jesus is speaking. Nothing else matters in this world, no matter how important it might seem, nothing else matters when Jesus has something to say. And this is very important for us to understand as we talk today about Sabbath rest and why Jesus commands us to take a Sabbath. What he's telling us to do is that we need to stop and listen to his word. No matter how busy or hectic our lives might seem, it is crucial for us to stop and listen to what Jesus has to say. That's why here at Community Lutheran Church, when we talk about being disciples, one of the key factors of that is we say, we hear God's word and worship. Because before we can do anything else, we need to stop and we need to listen to what Jesus has to say. We need that story in mind today as we come now to the third commandment, which says this, you shall honor the Sabbath day and you should keep it holy. Now, what does this mean? It means that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and gladly learn it. Like Martha, we believe that we have a lot of important things to do in this life. We believe that there's a lot of activity that needs to take place, and there is. There is a lot of important things going on. There is a lot of work to do in this world, but God tells us that you need to take one day to stop and remember that I'm in charge. I'm in control of everything. I run the show and you don't. You need to stop and listen to my word because man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The trouble is that we don't believe this. We think there's a lot of other important things going on. But Jesus says, listen, my word is what matters the most. Sports don't matter as much as my word. Sleep doesn't matter as much as my word. Work doesn't matter as much as my word. Video games don't matter as much as my word. Vacation doesn't matter as much as my word. When God's word is being spoken, nothing else matters. Now, in the Old Testament, they took this commandment very seriously. God told them that, look, I made the world in six days, and on the seventh day, I rested. And you should reflect me then in your work. You should work for six days, and on the seventh day, you should rest. You should cease from work. Now, when we say that God rested, we don't mean that he quit work altogether and he went on vacation. What we mean is that the ordering of creation was done. Everything ceased. Now. We should reflect that in our lives. We should work throughout our weeks. We should work hard. We should give ourselves completely to our jobs and to our families and to the callings God has given us. 
but on this day, on the seventh day, there should be rest. Again, in the Old Testament, they took this very seriously, and they said there was no work at all to be done on the Sabbath, and they, they got almost over the top with it. They said you can't even walk a certain amount of blocks on the Sabbath day. Now, we don't hold to that law anymore. Uh, Jesus is our Sabbath rest. He died and rose again and completed all the work that's necessary for us, and he even rested perfectly for us on uh, Saturday after he died before he rose again. However, we do still think we need time to stop and listen to God's Word. There still does need to be time in our lives where we cease from labor to listen to what Jesus has to say. The trouble is, like with Mary and Martha, there's always a Martha out there trying to draw us away from Jesus. There's any number of things that try and take us away from Him. But what we need is rest. In this busy world, we need to stop, to give ourselves a break, and we need to hear what God has to say to us, as I've said a bunch of times now. Here's what happens when we go to worship. When we go to worship, God is the primary one working. Worship is not so much about us giving ourselves to God as it is about God giving Himself to us. So He comes to us and we say it this way, He comes to us in His Word and in the sacraments. In His Word, which we hear read in the Scriptures, which we hear proclaimed to us in the sermon, and in the sacraments, that is in, in baptism and in the Lord's Supper. There Jesus is giving us gifts. He's giving us himself. He's telling us what we need to believe. He's showing us our sins and then he's forgiving us for those sins. Jesus is there performing these things for us. Now, though we passively, that is we sit down and do nothing to receive them, at the same time, we cannot help but be thankful for what he has done. We cannot help but respond to his word. And so when we go to worship, when we come to this Sabbath rest, there's an interaction between us and God. God gives us a gift and we respond with prayer and praise. For example, when we come in, we hear the name of God, that we, are in the, we gather in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we recognize then that we are a sinful people in the presence of a holy God. So we respond to this by then confessing our sins to him. Once we've confessed our sins, he's promised uh, to forgive them. And so then we hear what we call the absolution. And we'll talk more about this later on in confirmation. But that's when the pastor says that in the stead and by the command of Jesus, I forgive you your sins. Having our sins then forgiven, what do we do? We sing. We give thanks to God and we praise. And you see there's this back and forth throughout the entire service where God gives us a gift and we respond appropriately to him. This is what goes on on Sunday morning. We have a conversation, an interaction with God and His Word. And if anything in this world tries to draw us away from this, it's a dangerous thing and we need to avoid it. What we need is to sit and enjoy the presence of God. We need to gather where He will forgive us, where He will sustain us in His Word, and He will carry us into life everlasting. All right, that's all we got for today on the third commandment. Uh, we will talk more next time about the fourth commandment.